Well, good morning. Today's a big day because we're going to actually start raising quail. We'll be right back after the break. This video is part one of six, The Hatch, Raising Quail, part one. Well, welcome back. Very exciting starting our, our quail, raising quail for the first time here on the new homestead. And uh, we've spent a long time building up to this moment. So it's, this has been, uh, this is a major milestone for us. So now it's time to start raising them. And what I'm going to do today is um, <clears throat> instead of just going out and getting a bunch of fertile eggs and throwing them in the incubator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test everything out and make sure everything's warming up like I want it to. I got the heat lamp in the uh, brooder and I'm going to be watching and monitoring the, the heat, the temperature in here so I can tell how to adjust this. Um, the way I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to use this infrared thermometer. It's, uh, it's you know, you put, you, you just put the, uh, I don't know if you can see that. You just squeeze the button, the trigger, and it puts a laser dot on what you want to see what that surface temperature is. And it'll tell you right there, uh, it tells you what it is. Right here, what I like about it is when I want to check the temperature inside the brooder, I don't have to open up the brooder and, you know, get thermometers or anything. I can leave it shut just like this and I can shoot, I can shoot right, as long as I don't hit the, um, the hardware cloth, I'm shooting right through one there, and I can already see I'm 110 degrees on the surface in there, so this light is way too hot. This is, it needs to be right around about 100 degrees, so I'm gonna have to adjust this up, and I may even need to um, raise the lid, depending on, see down here on the other end of the, um, at the other end of the brooder, away from the lamp, it's 89 degrees, 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit down at this end. So it's pretty hot down here. It's still a little cool down here. So let me work with this until I get this adjusted right. One end will be hotter than the other, of course. So um, let me get that set up to where they can come down here and bunch up down here close to the light. It's instead of right under it. What I want them to do is be right on the edge, not directly under it. And once you got them like that, that's about right. If they're directly under the heat lamp, then that tells me that they're cold. So if they're, they're not quite under it and they're right on the edge of it, that's just about right. So let me work with this and get this temperature in here just right using this laser guided um, infrared thermometer. And I got this on Amazon. They're, they're pretty common and they're pretty cheap. It really wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 15 bucks or something like that. Well worth it. This right here is the incubator. I'm going to start working with it today. I have a thermo um, thermostat right here that I'm going to have to adjust. And I'm going to adjust my thermostat until I get the temperature in here like I want it. I've got a thermometer inside that actually lays on top of the eggs, so I'm just going to lay them on top of my quail rails and um, get the temperature going and adjust the thermostat until I get this at the right temperature. And um, I'm also going to work with the humidifier kit and get it to where I, I feel like it's working correctly as well. I got the monitoring system here, the control module, so I can check all this. So this is something I'm going to have to do in the next few days until I get this tweaked out. I want it to be um, working correctly with temperature and air and everything because it's critical that I have all that exactly right before I start trying to do the eggs or I'm just going to kill the, kill the eggs. So I'm going to work with this. I've got another little thing I'm going to have to do is I've got sunlight coming through this window directly on my incubator, which is apparently a no-no. No direct sunlight on your incubator because it causes fluctuations in the temperature range more than you want to do. So I'm going to make me a piece of plywood that, that temporarily covers that window for a couple of weeks while the incubating process is on. And then when the, um, they come out of the incubator and they go into the brooder, I can take that 
they take that piece of plywood off. So I'm gonna have to go make a piece of plywood and put it up there and get that set up, which is no big deal, five minute job. But anyway, it's all pretty exciting. And uh, me and Nancy are looking forward to raising quail here on the homestead. It's, it's part of our goal of um, producing um, as much of our own meat as possible, raising our own meat as well as our vegetables. So we're off and running. We'll be back in a few days after I get all this working jewels right, and we'll uh, get some some eggs. A friend of mine sells fertile um, Caternix jumbo eggs. This is the type, the breed that we want to raise is uh, jumbo Caternix quail. So we're going to get the eggs, and we'll get them set up, and we'll follow this journey all the way through until they hatch out, and that'll be. Uh, an interesting process and journey that we can take together. So we'll see you back in a couple of days. Well, welcome back friends. We've been so blessed by some of our subscribers that uh, one of them was, is real close to where we live here in Orange Springs. She's just up the road and uh, uh, from us, uh, only about a 12 minute drive for me, uh, Renee. She's a nice lady. I really like her a lot and she, um, uh, sold us some um, uh, jumbo Caternix quail eggs. I got 45 eggs. So me and Nancy are gonna start them in our incubator. We're gonna raise them and, and uh, hatch them from here. And uh, I hope you'll stick with us on the journey and watch this uh, progression of our first uh, hatch of quail eggs. So come on up and take a look at the, um, at the eggs that we got and we'll, we'll put them in the incubator and let the stop, uh, let the clock start ticking. Okay, let me carefully put these in. Uh, it's nice and warm in here. I'm gonna take the pointy in and put the pointy in down. And I'm not gonna shove them up right next to each other. What I'm gonna do is give them a little space in between each other. See how I'm kind of skipping them around. Okay, they're all in. And let's set the, put the cover back on. And there you go. Well, our jumbo Caternix quail eggs are in the incubator and they are doing their thing and we'll uh, stay tuned and stay with us and we're gonna do a progression of these and, until they hatch and uh, then we'll go you know, to the next step. But this is pretty exciting that we finally made our first milestone here. So we'll see you soon. Well, our quail eggs have been in the incubator for 14 days, so today I'm gonna pull out the quail rails and lay the eggs down on the bottom mesh of the um, incubator because they're going to be hatching in the next day or two. So we get them quail rails out of the way so they don't um, injure themselves uh, on those uh, rails. And then uh, we'll be back in um, a couple of days as soon as we are a brand new mama and daddy. And we'll check out how many uh, little baby quails we get out of this hatch. And um, we got another hatch coming after this. Uh, so we'll, um, we'll, we'll just keep adding to it. So we'll see you back here in a couple days.
Well, the quails are 36 hours old right now and they're dry, they're active. The little fledglings that we saw when they were first born were falling around and had hardly any movement and could barely move around. Oh, they got plenty of movement now. They're flittering around in there and scrambling around and walking all over each other. And they're nice and fluffy and dry. So it's about time to move them to the into the uh, brooder itself and I got the brooder warming up so I'm gonna give it a few hours and we're gonna put them in there but um, we uh, got about 16 hatch so it wasn't really a very good hatch rate I was probably my fault I think I was a little low on the humidity I'm gonna adjust that on the next batch I got four more dozen eggs coming and uh, I'll adjust that humidity level and I think I'll get a much better hatch on the next one so I won't give up. But anyway, these these girls are, are ready to go over. I thought you might want to come up and take a look at the brand new babies. So come on up and take a look in a close up look at them. We'll open the lid for a minute. There we are. Let's see if one will let me get them. Very small, he's pecking at my hand. <laughs> okay. Well, I thank you for watching me and Nancy uh, work with our first hatch of quail. Well, we're pretty happy to see them come to life and um, bring life to the homestead. So um, we're gonna take these guys in a couple hours and we'll move on to part two of this video as we put them into the brooder and um, we watch the progression of these these little babies um, you know for the next three weeks until they move out to the hut so we thank you for watching and if you want to be a part of our homestead family be sure to subscribe and be a part of us and we'd love to have you join up with us and and watch us on our journey here so until me and nancy bing bing and all these things See you next time. Always remember, by his hands we are fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Have a blessed day. Thank you for watching our videos. We love making them. If you like our videos, we ask you to partner with us in our mission by sharing our videos from YouTube and posts from Facebook to all social medias. It really inspires and encourages us. Some great places to share is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please like if you like this video, subscribe, click the notification button so you never miss another video. Click below for products we used in the videos and you could also partner with us without spending a penny. We welcome your encouraging comments, prayers and questions. And thank you for watching and sharing our videos and posts. Have a blessed day.